Hi my friends, once upon a time I saw this uh, video on YouTube. As you can see, a car with vertical the doors, which has a mechanism there. Very interesting, I said. Let's try to be more creative with this uh, mechanism. It has some superimposed parts here, as I see. But the idea remains very nice. So, in 2015, I created this uh, puzzle. Take a look. You see the green lever is the motor here and the other are passive levers. The general idea we notice here is that the mechanism is uh, spherical. Let's take a look at the assembly itself. You see, everything here is spherical. It goes to one point, the center point of this assembly, made in Inventor. Oh, this means that we can uh, recreate the assembly. Yes, we do. The parts are these ones and you can download them by clicking on the link in the screen. Let's create the assembly. New standard millimeters IAM and now usually we use uh, place component tool with the shortcut P. No. Now I use the Windows browser. This is the Windows browser. browser. You know it very well. And I select the first uh, fixed or grounded object, which is the pedestal with the name spherical base. I drop it in the graphic space of Inventor. And it comes grounded. You see, it is grounded. What means grounded? It means that all these seven fictitious entities are right over the other seven fictitious, fictitious uh, entities from the part. So I don't need to see this because I continue to add components. The first one is this lever, which is the motor lever. If I move it, I can place inside the base, you see? What should I do? I use constraints. If I select a face and I wait a little, I have the option center point because this is spherical. This green face is spherical. I select the center point and then I select the center point of the reference. 
now the lever has three degrees of freedom all the translations uh, uh, fixed taken okay very interesting you cannot move it but only on a sphere a sphere with the same center this one you see which is I go here and you see the center point this is the center for both for the spherical base and the spherical lever all the levers are spherical Good. The next component is the shaft. I bring it here. I apply constraint. Insert this face to be placed in the center. And I select this circle or this circle. Not important which one this is good apply then I place this end not this end as you see here in the reference this end is placed with the mate over the axis of the shaft okay the only movement possible is rotation. I cannot move it up and down on this axis. And you know why. Now I place, I measure, I use the tool measure with the shortcut M from Monaco to measure the distance between these two faces. The distance is 29. Oh, very good. What should I do? I select the bushing of 29. The other one is 39. The other one is 59. This is the right bushing for the moment. Insert this circle here but the other direction good okay be sure that this is a contact because they have the same dimension the distance and the dimension of pushing is the same we go further to place another lever this is the other lever to be placed as you can see here this is unique among the others so I apply the magnificent spherical constraint, waiting a little, selecting center point and center point of the, the assembly. Okay, you see, the important thing is that they are matching together because the distance to the center is what it must be where it must be or what this face will be over this face the only constraint I place here is axis on axis axis on axis okay very good what are the components what what is the movement here 
You see, this is the movement. A spherical movement, uh, if I can say this. Now, I bring the bolt and I constrain it with the insert and aligned this circle to be placed here or here to have the same face. Why? You'll see right now here is the same situation. You see I bring the screw here two screws one two constrain insert this face over this face apply this face over this apply okay movement is free the next lever is this blue one with three uh, ends three holes let me bring it here and apply the constraint point on point center point on center point okay to see that I can move it over this end but the one I must respect is this one look here the middle one constraint axis on axis apply now I rotate a little this levers and I go to the next one which is this one to close the linkage yes this is unique is red this is similar but not red so I select this one to be placed in our new assembly this one comes somewhere here you see it is connected to the first to this to this uh, no connect it here and to another shaft let's make this combination what is where is placed this it is placed at a distance of uh, not the next but the second circle of holes and because I want to respect the, uh, the axis, this is placed somewhere in this direction. So I place now uh, another shaft and it must be placed right here on this hole constrain insert and this yes it is the second and the position is uh, okay apply then axis 
mate, not insert, axis on axis, apply, and axis on this axis. Okay, what do we have here, my friends? We have a mechanism, yes? You see, I can move any lever and I have one degree of freedom for all. Good. To have a shorter tutorial, I'll uh, place the other components by myself. Wait for me to finish this. Are you ready? This is the full populated assembly. The name is AFTER. Spherical Mechanisms Puzzle AFTER. Why uh, puzzle? Because you can change every part here and you can create your own parts, components, levers, you add shafts and so on. What I want now is to apply a movement. You see, if I move one lever, I have everything moving. And this configuration, you will create your configuration. But I don't want to have this contact. Yes, this position could be the uh, one limit. Yes, I measured the angle between these two. M measure between a plane and another plane similar XZ from the assembly, XZ from this uh, lever, green one. The angle is 73. Let's see 70. Yes, 70 will be more uh, distant than now. I apply constraint, angle, first solution, and then I select X, Z, I write here 70, and the other one. You see, the position is good. Now I ask you, how can we create a movement here. Now I cannot move this because I placed an angle. Who knows? I'll tell you that we use this constraint, angle, this new constraint, angle, to apply drive. 70 is one value and uh, the other must be lower, for instance, 50. Let's see. Good. What about 40? Very good, my friend. Very good. Look here. One movement is to this shaft and the other limit is very fine. Okay. Now I want to create a repetitive movement by selecting start 
and start of four times I start and I see what happens one two three four good but uh, instead of uh, amount of value I select total number of steps instead of 30 I place 100 to have a slower motion for 100 and move one two three four you can see it in movements very nice my friends yes I'm happy to show you such an interesting mechanism create your own levers place them whenever and wherever you want and have fun call your children near the monitor and tell them look what I have here okay that's all for today thanks for watching bye bye